Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Burning Dog Face, and I'd like to welcome you to Let's Play Bastion. This game came out in 2011, and it's an action RPG that takes place immediately after a great catastrophe that throws the entire world into disarray. People kind of raved about this game back when it came out. And I don't think I've ever actually heard anyone say a negative word about Bastion, so I've been looking forward to finally experiencing it for myself. But, uh, at the same time, people are kind of vague when they talk about this game. And I pick up whispers that suggest to me that this game has a secret layer of feels deep inside. So, uh, <laughs> I'm proceeding with caution. That being said, this is going to be a blind LP. I jumped into the very first area in order to get a reading on the frame rate and audio levels, but other than that, everything we're about to see is new to me. I'm going to play the game for the first time ever, and you guys get to come along for the ride. With a little luck, we'll all enjoy ourselves. Now, with all that said and done, let's play Bastion. I thought this was neat. Uh, instead of, you know, easy, normal, hard, it says normal and no sweat mode. Start a new game with unlimited chances to carry on if defeated, for less experienced players of all ages. Note, some achievements cannot be earned in this mode. So let's go into normal. I know that means if uh, I have like, limited lives and I have to start the game all over, that would be problematic for a let's play, but uh, we shall see. Proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. It took me longer than I care to admit to realize that it was waiting for me to push a button. He gets up, sets off for the bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. So, uh... Right off the bat, I'm going to mention that this game was kind of renowned for its narrator. And I know it seems like a weird thing to be, uh, you know, known for, but the narrator in this game is reactive. He talks about the things you do as you do them. Ground forms up under his feet as it point in the way. He don't stop to wonder why. That makes one of us. This does seem awfully convenient. What if I go... No, it doesn't disappear when I go back. I thought this was like a little garden the first time. That's totally just tiles of leaves lying on top of it. Oh, there's a smashed plant over here. Okay. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Kale hammer. Well, it's a touching reunion. I was wondering about this. Oh, Jesus Christ. So these things have little things in them? I don't actually know what they're for yet. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant. In the calamity. Whoa! How do I get over there? And then he falls to his death. I'm just fooling. <laughs> Can I jump? No, I see. Uh... No, there's no jump button that I can find. Chickle uh -huh. hmm. I remember I played this 
the demo of this on Xbox 360 back in the day. And uh, if I remember correctly, I decided not to go for it, of all things, because I had an SD TV back then, and the text was hard to read. Is that a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. Uh -huh. Oh, I've just noticed the health bar or anything. It's gonna just smash everything? And if some stuff has, uh. I can't go there. If some stuff has little items inside, should I just smash literally everything I see? I don't know. And it feels like I'm destroying what's left of the world. Which I uh, assume wasn't in le levitating pieces beforehand. Alright, kid, where are we going? An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods. But it'll have to do. It's awfully convenient. Fang repeater. Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. Neat. Let's smash these boxes, I guess. Ah, oh, fuck. My organs. Oh, nuts for this. I'm just gonna lie here for a bit. Alright, fine. I really like that. It doesn't move until you uh, make him move. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Ah! Sometimes you just need a drink. Okay, I can just do that as many times as I the want, or... Squirts, tunnels up around ah! Here. Must have fled here from the mines. Uh, one of these guys, inside of a gear, is the desktop icon for this game. Holy crap. Oh. Hmm. I'm gonna speak up here first. It's a wonder the old saloon's still standing. Used to have the nicest view. Kid finds a memento from a girl he knew. Always used to fancy her. Crystal Barrette. A memento. A fashion accessory covered in soot. Holds great value of the sentimental kind. Also holds hair firmly in check. Best hang on to it just in case. City Crest. A memento. An identification badge from the old days. All those in official business of the city bear the star of Kaolandia. It is said to represent wealth, uh, warmth, labor, and sacrifice. Is that it on his back there? Oh. I can just keep doing that. That was nice. Alright, fine, let's take a look in the saloon. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking dead. Dang. Poor Rondi. Then Kid finds his trusty shield. I thought one of his arms was bigger than the other, but I guess he's just wearing a gauntlet on that hand. As he's facing down, the hands look the same size. It's just uh, the forearm and this one that's bigger.
but just as he's getting a handle on it, the security takes him for a petty thief. Oh. Hello? Nope! Clang. Shield saves us high. Okay, but boxes with these fucking gas men falling out. Is that part of the security? Windbags start turning up for last call. Ah. Oh. Okay. He seems to auto focus on the nearest guy. Or no, I don't know how that works. It's not the nearest guy. Start coming out of the woodwork. Nope, all of you get out of here. Old fella pops out in front of the kid. Fuck me, I gotta hook half my health. I keep forgetting for some reason I can't move while I'm uh, shooting. out the window. It's a bit of a drop. Oh, before I do that... Oh, fuck, I can't go back. Yeah, this, this room is as far as I made it. I didn't even see that big green guy. I'm not gonna try to smash Rondi, that would be... Terribly disrespectful. I just checked the footage to get the name. It's called the Bullhead Shield. Neat. So, like, no, no inventory up here. Just, just the meaningless things you have. Well, not meaningless, but you know what I mean. Not your actual inventory. Oh boy, looks like I'm gonna have to jump! He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. Alright. What happened to the gun? I can move while I'm doing this. I do appreciate this, though. People who've been watching my videos for a while should know. Kid spies a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. I'm a big fan of hammers. Good god. Shoots exploding arrows. Or maybe it's just an explosion because they died. I'm not clear on that. Something stringy. The kid pockets a memento from a breaker. Once the fastest man in the land. An upgrade material for the Breaker's Bow. A stretch of Mies Gut, prized by bulliers and pel pelt ball fans. One more reason for the popularity of Mies Hunting. Kid better watch his step. You see what I mean? Reactive. I remember when I played the, uh, the demo. At one point, I just started smashing all kinds of shit, and he talked about how I was taking out my frustrations on the world or something like that. Oh yeah. Beware, evil. The time of the hammer is upon you. That's weird. 
just Good go. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aim aiming for the kid. Right back at ya. I missed the gun, to be honest. The bow takes much longer to be effective. Whirlwind. Picks up a few pointers from a dusty old tome. He's a mighty fast learner. Nice. I'm guessing those bottles of liquor up in the corner are fueling my uh, special abilities. Black tonic. I'm getting pretty good at that. Ah, I want to see it close again because that's pretty cool. So this is really messed up. I don't know if you noticed that. The I can't even make. I can't even understand what I'm looking at down there. Or the world is just floating, rickety platforms. It doesn't spell much. He finds the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. What am I doing wrong? Other than, you know, walking off the edge of a abyss. Okay, so far trusting that it's going to work hasn't worked once. Did you lie to me, Indy 3? So look in the arsenal first. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. That would do it. So, this is Solandia, and not Kaolandia. I mean, this is a cell hammer. Sail hammer? I don't know. Why am I suddenly in shorts? Is I already wearing shorts? No. He just takes his pants off when he comes in here. Uh, sail hammer. Well, balanced melee weapons, stationary attacks that are more powerful. I did not know that. Heavy-duty hammers such as this constructed Sailandia's famous rippling walls and protected them from elements and foes alike. Fang repeater. Rapid-fire range weapon cannot move while firing reloads automatically. A munition chamber fashioned from an unlucky beast gives a distinct silhouette to these silent repeating hunters, once favored by Ura hunt. What was these silent repeating rifles, once favored by Ura hunters? Breaker's bow, versatile ranged weapon. Attack power increases as the bowstring is drawn. With these durable lightweight bows, Solandia Breaker divisions reconnoitered the farthest reaches of the land in the name of their city. Awesome. Oh. Bolt burst. Fang repeater skill. A spiral of bolts that deals damage in every direction. Trappers would rely on this technique in the event they got surrounded. Whirlwind, sail hammer skill. A furious spinning strike that can damage multiple foes. Originally developed with the city mason's wrecking teams. Dancing shot, breaker's bow skill. A secret breaker technique that causes an arrow to bounce from target to target. Originally intended only for spectacle, but it proved to have practical uses. I haven't seen anything down there I don't currently have, except for a big pile of junk. Like that object in the foreground that is either a coconut or a bowling ball. 
Maybe I'll add things to the file as I find them. That would be neat. One sip of the spirits in that distillery, and the kid will feel like a new man. What? Squirt cider. Plus 10 max health. Fermented squirt extract of the nose of stale bread and ocean water. Very nutritious. Dead rum. Uh, plus 10% critical hit chance. Active only when at full health. Pungent concoction that calms senses and steadies nerves. Favored by the breakers and other fighting forces. Fetching fizz. Absorb stray fragments. Started as a barroom prank, but evolved to become popular with miners and scrap workers. Metallic aftertaste. Well, I'm always on board with more health. I'm not really sure what that means. I guess it's shaped like a magnet, so I assume it means I pull uh, pickups in from further away. I wonder if, I, if this is permanent or if I can go back and swap it out. Let's find out. Spirits provide passive bonuses. No, I can totally swap it out. Okay. The higher your level, the more booze you can have uh, on your shelf at the one time. I don't know if that means he's drinking all of these, or... Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. Oh crap! It's a popcorn machine. Wow, oh, they really did it's way more damage. I'm standing still. Take that. That box is supposed to have an enemy in it, wasn't it? That one was Maud, the tutor. Once taught the kid good manners. He never used them, though. No, why would I do that? Why'd you say that? Why'd you not say that until I destroyed it? What the hell happened to them? Why'd they get Pompeyed? Looks like the only trigger for these things is going into the right place, but... That riff right there specifically reminds me of uh, Tower of Guns. Just the bit where you're hanging out on the main menu and it's shredding. Almost quietly in the background. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Bumpers don't seem to run either. I guess this is just your speed. Fair enough. Probably don't want to go flying off the edge anyway. Fortunately, there's this. Well. I'll say this, this is one of the more colorful post-apocalypses I've ever been involved in. I'm Burning Dog Face, and this has been the first episode of Let's Play Bastion. I'll see you next time when the kid continues exploring what's left of Celandia, in search of survivors and this mysterious bastion. Later!